Thank you very much. Um, yeah, nice to see everyone. There's a few familiar faces. You're all blurred, so I, I can't actually see you, so that's good. It's a good start. Um, so yeah, how to make your customer last by putting them first. Um, so yeah, I'll be talking about what it means to put your customers um, first. And we've got some effective strategies and techniques for gathering better insight. A lot of it is on point from where we've already been today. So I, I'm hoping as we kind of get into the detail, because there's a lot of words, so I'll do my best to kind of bring it to life for you. Um, we've got some real world examples um, of companies putting all of these strategies into place. And, and what are the expectations of customers today? Because there's a lot of um, expectation. People have got access to everything, so it's gonna be really, really uh, clever of you to get these things in place so people don't find you out and realize that you're really shallow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, who are Dot Digital? Um, do, do any of you? Oh, I've got to see better actually. Do any of you know Dot Digital? Have any of you heard of us? Woo, yeah. Chris. Any of you Dot Digital customers? <laughs> partners? I oh, know there's a few yeah. partners. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, who are we, and why have we got the authority to talk about this stuff? Um, so, we are a best of breed CXD platform. Now, I hate acronyms. I really do. But C. DP is a customer data platform. We've taken the X and we put it after the C to make it customer experience data platform. So what it's doing is turning all of that data into insight so you can actually see what is happening with your customers, where they're clicking, where they're living. Um, we have form, we have scale, we've got 4,000 brands, uh, 420 people now work for our organisation. I'm based in the London Bridge office. Um, I go in on a Wednesday, so I've got like a hybrid role. My kind of main area is sort of Manchester, London, Bristol, Birmingham and the UK, uh, but we cover pretty much the whole of EMEA uh, between us. Um, we have been growing for about 22 years, so we've been doing this longer than most. Uh, and we're UK based, everything is based in the UK, uh, which is really important as well. So a little bit about me, just so you know that I'm not a real dullard. Um, actually, that, the, the me slide's gone, but I'll tell you about me. <laughs> I added that afterwards. Um, so yeah, so I've been with DOT since October last year, and I, uh, my background is, I worked for DHL in the 90s, I sold cars, been in the kind of service industry um, and I got into e-commerce and tech around about 2015-ish, um, working for a company called Streamtime Software, which was project management software for agencies. So I was there for seven years and in that seven years, I was just saying, we never ever touched PowerPoint. Everything was done um, with a demo, a conversation and a demo at the Apple Store on a Friday afternoon in the theatre on Regent Street. Um, so I really kind of learned how to use, I really got into demoing software. So it's a bit overwhelming having like 20 odd slides to go through. Um, but I learned a lot about the industry, the ecosystem. I then moved from Streamtime and worked for NetSuite. So I've gone from the small boutique Auckland based software company to the ridiculously corporate Oracle owned NetSuite. So I was an account, uh, advertising, media, publishing, executive, selling it. I then went into enablement, so I was training consultants on how to implement NetSuite in 90 days, which is impossible, by the way. Um, <laughs> and then I moved to another Kiwi company, which I was at for three and a half years before I joined. So the guys from Blend know this story because I, I was at um, Starship It, for three and a half years. I was the boots on the ground in the UK for three and a half years. So it was just me finding the leads, demoing the leads, closing the leads, doing everything, support, everything. Um, so it's been wonderful to join a tribe of people at Dot Digital and have people in the same time zone that I can speak to uh, during the day and also have this wonderful community of amazing partners who are just, you know, there's such a rich heritage of partnerships within Dot Digital. 
Um, right, so that's a little bit about me. I'm also, I also have a radio show that I do on a Friday night between nine and midnight on 365 Radio. If you like electronic music, tune in, you'll love it. Um, so yeah, so I'm sure none of these will be a shock to you, um, but you know, moving into 2023, there's a lot of challenges that brands are facing. Increased competition, there's still a huge number of e-commerce brands in the market and many more entering um, that is making it really difficult to choose the right uh, e-commerce uh, platform, the e-commerce tech partner. Customer acquisitions, attracting new customers is very, very difficult now, um, especially through the traditional channels. Keeping your customers for a long time, customer retention is again a constant challenge um, because of all the temptations from other brands as well. It's very difficult to get people to, to kind of commit and be loyal uh, to you. And um, finally, consumer behaviour. Um, it's really hard for smaller brands to keep up with all of the different um, behavioural changes that, um, that that are happening. So. That's the sort of four things. I'm sure there's stuff there that, that you can uh, um, relate to. Um, so just kind of going on from what we talked about, or what's been talked about earlier, about customer data. Um, it's really key. It's really important to get customer data uh, for retention, uh, for marketing, retention marketing. So, you know, it provides actionable insights, it gives you um, great information on behavior, um, which can inform targeting and personal messaging strategies. If you don't know what the content is and how often on what channel they'd like to receive on, how can you provide engagement content that's gonna keep people interested? Improving customer experience. By understanding customer needs and preferences, brands can create a better customer experience which can lead to increased satisfaction and loyalty. You can emotionally unsubscribe from a brand uh, if the content doesn't hit the mark, even if you don't physically do it. You just, you're just not going to subscribe to it in your brain. Um, increases efficiency on your return on investment. So has anybody heard of the Pareto rule? Yeah. yeah. We don't know if it's entirely accurate, but it basically says that 80% of revenue comes from 20% of your database. So that's quite interesting. <laughs> so being more efficient and focusing on customers that are most valuable and loyal to you is going to give you your best ROI. That makes sense? Um, and finally, data driven decisions. Um, customer data provides the information needed to make data driven decisions, can prove the effectiveness of marketing campaigns and initiatives. So how do we overcome these challenges? So firstly, we'll dive into the importance of customer data um, and how it can be used to gain insights and the behavior. We'll look at personalization, how you can tailor your offerings um, to individual customers to enhance their experience of your brand. Automation, we'll explore how automation can streamline your customer service and sales processes, making them more efficient. Uh, and lastly, we'll talk about multi-channel omni-channel uh, marketing. We've been banging on, or we have been banging on about this today. Um, we'll, yeah, it allows businesses to reach customers through a variety of different channels, social media, email, mobile, etc. So customer data, to put simply, it is information you receive from customers whenever they interact with your brand. Personal information, um, on-site behavior data, engagement data. Um, customer, da customer data is a cornerstone to successful marketing strategy, specifically a retention strategy. On the personalization side of things, personal details, uh, abandoned browse content, abandoned cart content, all of these things are things that we can leverage. But one of the most important things that we've noticed, especially in dot on our platform, is RFM. Is anybody familiar with RFM? Three letter acronym, I hate them. So it's recency, frequency, and monetary. So RFM, we've got this really cool um, thing about personas. Somebody mentioned personas earlier about 
on Trustpilot, is it possible to see what kind of people are complaining or you know where are they putting their energies, what are they clicking on, that kind of thing. We've got these personas that you can, I was going to say manipulate, um, <laughs> that you can review on our platform. Um, an understanding of being, being able to manipulate that data easily um, gives you that segmentation on the fly. So you can see if somebody's um, a recent buyer, you might want to ask for feedback. You might want to see if they can upsell. You might want to turn them onto a VIP program. Um, do they need nurturing? Do you want to incentivize them, give them thirty percent off a, you know, rubber duck if they're if you're a bathroom company? Um, they might not be interested in a new bath. They just might want a, a new rubber duck. Um, tell more about the brand, about the values, and if they're inactive, are their preferences up to date? Reach out and check and re-engage. Um, if they're not valuable, bin them off. You know, we, that that email actually gave me. Tr triggered me earlier with all of the the greenhouses. <laughs> that is, how is that even possible? <laughs> That's just crazy. Um, so yeah, anything like that, that should not be happening. If you've got a, um, a marketing strategist worth their weight in gold, that sort of shit ain't going to happen. Um, so yeah. Okay, so mastering uh, automation leads to some great use cases. Customer segmentation, uh, segment your customers into groups based on their behavior, on their interests and their preferences. This allows you to create those targeted campaigns that are specific to each group, ensuring that your messages are relevant and engaging. Um, automated follow-ups. These are follow-ups. After they've made a purchase, a customer um, can see, uh, you know, you can engage with them um, in some other way. Uh, this helps keep your brand, brand um, top of mind, ensures that customers receive the, the right message at the right time. Um, product recommendations, like your rubber duck, etc. Uh, loyalty programs. Use marketing automation to manage and track loyalty programs, such as reward points, discounts, special promotions. Um, we integrate with a lot of tech partners, as I'm sure, that, you know, the tech stack with big commerce and you know, all of the other uh, tech partners is, is rich. There's a lot of, of um, options, you've, you know, great loyalty programs that you can kind of plug into uh, and use. Um, and they incentivize customers, they really do work. Uh, so it's good to have a look into those as well. Consistency, automate repetitive tasks and ensure that all customer communications are consistent and on brand. This creates a seamless customer experience that builds trust and reliability, making it more likely uh, for customers to return uh, in the future. Okay, um, using a combination of channels helps strengthen your reach. So this multi-channel piece, we were talking about that earlier, really, really important. Um, last year, we published a report called Hitting the Mark and it analyzed 100 e-commerce brands globally. And only 18 of those brands we researched were using multi-channel tactics. SMS, which is 100% success delivery rate and takes six seconds to read was 11 out of 100, which is crazy for SMS because it's a no brainer. You know, if you can't get an email response, you send a text, they are going to look at it. Everyone looks at it, 100% success rate. Um, but they haven't, brands still haven't managed to embrace that strategy. Um, branch out on different channels. Think of data using the RFM modeling. Uh, what qualifies a v VIP customer? Could they proceed to a VIP program? That could include updates via SMS, Facebook Messenger, exclusive emails, um, only they will have access to. Um, I'm just trying to think of a, a, an example recently. I, I buy a lot of vinyl and um, I buy all my music on Bandcamp because the money goes straight to the artists. So I spend a fortune, and there's this wonderful uh, record label called Hogan Nord, and they're based in, I think they're in Belgium or something like that. Um, so I have to, I, I'm a member because I have been really loyal, and I've, they send out these little seven inches with no middle in them, and they're like little artifacts, they're gonna last forever. Um, and I've 
signed up to that VIP program because I'm so impressed with their shipping, the packaging, it's all exclusive, it's really, really cool. So, you know, VIP programs really do work. They work for me. Um, okay, so real world examples. So let's look at some examples. Now I did have these on an automated like, it didn't work. Um, <laughs> so the first one is a company called Free Now, a nice, clean, simple email um, with, with the name Free Now, Frank, it's personal. Um, the call to action here is to book your next trip. That's great. Vija is a little bit more subtle. Uh, however, they also introduce their community by means of welcoming you to the family. So they're kind of playing on your heartstrings a little bit. Uh, but it's very well in keeping with the brand. So this is a really good example of kind of person personalising those kind of emails. Um, abandoned carts. So now most of you have probably had an abandoned cart situation where you're bored, you're just thinking, oh, I'm not going to put in another flipping date, from a date of birth. I'm not going to put in my postcode again. And it just goes on forever. It's horrible. So here's a two-stage abandoned cart from um, Revolve. Subject line suggesting that other people are looking at the same product, so that gives you the urgency. You're going to miss out. Someone else is going to buy it before you do. Better get on it. So it gives you that kind of urgency. It's saying that it's social... You know, it's in the social, um, it's social proof. So you're creating that kind of social proof. Um, and they offered product recommendations tied to what is in the cart. And Skull Candy. So Skull Candy, again, your chance to get a head start on Black Friday. Um, really effective messaging. Okay, so product recommendations are a commerce favorite, proven um, for marketers to increase sales and give visibility to their product range. Uh, across all marketing campaigns, I'm sure many of you already are doing this in some capacity. In dot digital, marketeers can easily drag and drop a variety of product recommendations into email campaigns. We've got these wonderful templates that you can pick up your, um, your item, drop it into your campaign, and press a button and off it goes. Really, really cool. Um, each product recommendation can be then filtered so you might want to do kind of female running shoes for less than £100 and, you know, be able to have a look at that data as well. And AI, I know we've mentioned AI, and I know there's not very many fans, but it's really useful. We've got Winston AI, so we're one of the first um, kind of CDX, CXDP companies to do it. And what it actually does, when you're in the product, Winston pops up. It's a bit like the paperclip. You remember paperclip in Word? <laughs> but it's really cool. It's going to give you effective interaction. It's not going to try and write an email for you or an essay um, on Mozart. And I was told the other day my, daughter, my son's girlfriend was writing her dissertation on, on Mozart's clarinet. Um, I said, oh, put it into chat GPT. It's wicked. She did it. She went, I've just written all that. Like, pretty much word for word. Um, but yeah, Winston AI comes up, helps you create your campaigns. It helps you with a kind of prompt, just nudging you into do the various different things that you need to do to make that campaign work. Um, so our machine learning model looks at huge data sets, identifies patterns, makes predictive recommendations based on what customers are most likely to purchase next, ultimately turning lights on in a room that you didn't know you had. Um, so yeah, so product recommendations. So Philip Kingsley uh, using purchase data to suggest repeat purchasing, and they use a GIF which just makes the headline uh, pop. Nutri Advance have set a timely follow-up to a recent purchase to suggest look-alike products to cross-sell. And finally, Paul Smith. We're actually in the Paul Smith Theatre. Paul Smith is one of our customers. Um, they're showcasing their best sellers, useful for welcome programs with no prior purchase data and products always relevant at the point of their sign up. So, to conclude, are we doing for time? Are we okay? Um, we need to be saying the right message at the right time to the right person <laughs> on the right channel. <laughs> 
it's just so weird, isn't it? Um, and that's still so relevant, and it's all what we're all trying to achieve. Um, I know everything has changed since COVID, and it's been, um, you know, we've we've had to adopt smarter tactics. So that's what we're trying to we're trying to do. We're all trying to help sharpen each other up and and get you know smarter and um, second guess uh, the, the the customer. So how have it, the expectations around the statement really evolved? Uh, before, oh, this is going to go straight through and load them all up, isn't it? So before, it was a nice content with a nice design. Um, the content is on point. It looks nice. And now it needs to be personalised to make it more effective and relevant. Secondly, 11 o'clock used to be the optimum time for an email message. Did you know that? Yeah, 11 on a Tuesday. Um, now the right time for each person is based on a particular data source or behavioural trigger. Um, for the right person, send to my top performing segment. Now you need to send to target dynamically um, driven segments using the R RFM um, affinity scores. It sounds like something out of a Marvel film, doesn't it? <laughs> um, and the right channel. So before it was all about email, email for everyone, email, email, email. Now it's speaking to customers on the best channel for them. That could be WhatsApp, um, social media, live chat. Uh, we're seeing loads of, of, of interest in live chat recently. Really, really good. Um, and that's it. So I do my Ricky Gervais thing now. <laughs> uh, yeah, any questions? Yeah, so again, it's, it's to do with, with user experience. So when, you're, uh, um, when you've signed up for Dot .digital and you're a customer, um, we've got uh, customer success teams, depending on you know, if you're a big customer or a small customer, we've got obviously AI bots for the smaller customers. But there is the request for live chat and, and, and helping you know, customers get on, in, on in, the, in the platform. And also on our website as well, if you sign up for um, a trial, there's you know, a bit of interaction there as well. It's something that we're, we're working a lot more on to get it up to more of a, um, a you know, chargeable kind of item. Well, you've got, so with all of, I mean, I, I actually, so I'm, I'm speaking again in a couple of weeks in, in Manchester. And I sent out through Dot Digital an invitation to everyone. <clears throat> you can unsubscribe. You know, d d the fact is, if I've bought something from Hogan Ord Records, and they've emailed me three or four times, oh, and I didn't like that track, I'll get a text. Oh, but you bought this track. You really want to get this? There's only thirty of them left. So I'll, I'll click on it and I'll buy. It, it's as simple as that. It really depends on, you know, what your trying to sell and what, what, what it is that you're selling. It, it's what we, we try and do at Dot is get away from the spam side of things. You know, data is really key and, and, and clean data is, is something that we're really big on. And, and it, yeah, it's all about personas and, and that, that whole thing about knowing, we, we've got a very smart analytics part in on the platform that shows you who's who's engaged uh, who's clicked on what you know and you, what you can actually do is spin off a segment and automation on that block so if there's like 24 people who are really not interested but they've clicked on something in the last 12 months and it's a a pair of converse blue you know you can create a segment just for those people based on the fact that they've clicked on a blue pair of converse um, so it's all about that kind of segmentation uh, side of things and being able to see <coughs> through those analytics really and and yeah you you're not probably not going to send a text to those people you're going to utilize email i mean the things are changing we're we're not an es an esp e uh, email services. services platform god i even forgot what it means <laughs> we're moving away from that to this 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 customer data uh, customer experience data so all of that data that's being aggregated even through our partners as well you know working with big commerce trust pilot um 
you guys as well. We, we've, we've just built an automation uh, with you guys. I'll let them, I'm oh, still their thunder, but um, <laughs> you know, it's having that, that kind of broad um, data aggregation and being able to, to show that and be smart when you're creating your campaigns. Yeah, we do a lot of stuff and people don't actually know. We don't shout about it enough, really. We do a lot of really, really cool stuff, much better than the other people. <laughs>No, I mean, any, anyone who's on, on um, what's the monkey one? The um, oh, MailChimp. So, You're looking at me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, So anyone who's on MailChimp, if, if they're kind of outgrowing MailChimp, I mean, that, that greenhouse one looked like a MailChimp kind of like email. Anyone who's kind of outgrowing MailChimp and getting to that kind of, you know, we want to do more, that, any, anyone... I suppose between 5 million and 500 million, that's where we, we sit. Yeah, we're a little bit more expensive sometimes, but you know, if you take someone like Clavio, when they get to kind of 300 uh, emails, we become more competitive than them, and we can do a whole bunch more stuff. And you can use child accounts for international as well, which is something that you can't do on other platforms. So rather than having to have an instance of that for Paris and Milan and New York, you can create your HQ in the UK and have child accounts for, you know, Paris, Milan, and New York, and report on that holistically. Really, really powerful. Um, what single customer view as well? That's another thing that gives you that insight. So you can have a look at your customer and who is clicking on what and you know, how to fashion your campaigns effectively. A bit, a bit of both, really. Okay. Yeah, again, it depends on how, how big, you know, the opportunity is, really, um, and what you're looking to do. Yeah, but we can work with, with, with pretty much everyone. We've got open API as well, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, so you'd still use Google to do a lot of that, that stuff, but for your database, you know, that's what you'd be using our platform for.